My name is Trudy Logan and I'm the founder and CEO of Arrhythmia Alliance. Arrhythmia Alliance is a collaboration of patients, caregivers, healthcare professionals and policy makers. And we want to bring to you today education so you can better understand living with arrhythmias. I'm delighted to welcome Professor Hugh Colkins, Medical Director of Arrhythmia Alliance. Uh, Professor Colkins is based at John Hopkins in Baltimore. Welcome. Professor Parkins, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Drew. It's good to be here. Thank you. Um, I have a variety of questions for you from our panel. A lot of them very worried, very anxious. So if we could just go through them, and I know your expertise will be invaluable in reassuring uh, the patients. Moving on to probably the most common arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation. Could you give a brief description of AF? regarding AF and self-care? So atrial fibrillation, you know, as we all know, is an extremely common heart rhythm condition. It's the most common heart rhythm condition affecting somewhere between around 6 million people uh, uh, in the United States. So it's very, very common. And it, with the aging of the population, the number of patients with AFib is going to increase dramatically. AFib is a uh, irregular, a rapid irregular heartbeat where the upper chamber goes four or 500 beats a minute and the lower chamber tries to keep up but goes somewhere between we'll say 100 and 180 beats a minute. But you end up with an irregular, irregularly irregular heartbeat, beep, 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 beep. You know, the, you know and it's, it's sort of a chaotic heart rhythm. You know, some people will say fish flopping in your chest or drums beating in your chest. There's different ways of describing it, but it's sort of this chaotic heart rhythm condition that lasts for at least 30 seconds for some people if they're in it all the time. And AFib is very much an age-related condition. It's rare before 50. By the time you're 80, one in 10 people have it. So it's, and it occurs more, most commonly in white men. So a white man in their 50s, this is sort of the types of patients I see day in and day out. Women can get it too. African Americans are much likely to, less likely to develop atrial fibrillation. So again, a common and important arrhythmia. And is there anything that somebody with AF can do to try to avoid episodes? Well, before I answer that question, let me take, not miss the chance to talk about AFib and stroke. The way AFib can kill you or change your life forever is to give you a stroke, and AFib increases your risk of stroke by about fivefold. And depending on how many other stroke risk factors you have, you may, your current recommendations likely will recommend you be placed in a blood thinner. And other stroke factors include age over 65, hypertension, diabetes, heart failure, prior stroke, age over 75, you're even higher risk. So if you have two or more of those risk factors and you have AFib or you have had AFib, your risk of stroke is somewhere between two and 6% per year. And those are big strokes. And these are individuals where you take a blood thinner once or twice a day, you can knock that stroke risk back to a normal or close to normal level. So that's important to remember. But in terms of treating AFib, there's lots of things we can do to treat AFib from lifestyle interventions, cutting down on alcohol, losing weight, treating sleep apnea if you have it, treating hypertension if you have it, to antiarrhythmic medications, drugs like flecainide, sodalol, amiodarone, and of course, we have catheter ablation, which is your catheter-based procedure to go in and cauterize the AFib. So th there's many, many treatments available, and the key is to see your cardiologist, electrophysiologist, and they can help guide you through which treatment is the right one for you. And of course, your, your preferences and values matter a lot. And the important thing for patients is that they adhere to their blood thinners, their anticoagulation therapy as well as seek treatment because the anticoagulation doesn't treat AF, but it will certainly reduce their risk of an AF-related stroke. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. It's also important to remember that aspirin does little to prevent strokes. Aspirin increases the risk of bleeding in your brain and from anywhere else. But contrary to what we used to think, it does very little to prevent strokes from AFib. You need to be on a blood thinner and anticoagulants, a drug called a NOAC or warfarin, to prevent strokes from AFib. Yeah, and, and all the clinical guidelines now say that aspirin uh, is, is not 
suitable for people with AF, isn't it? They should be anticoagulated. Yeah, this has been one of the real shifts over the last five to 10 years is people are running away from aspirin now, whereas in the old days, everyone thought it was the wonder drug. Absolutely. Thank you, Professor Calkins, on behalf of Rhythmia Alliance and all our patients for providing this valuable information. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Trudy. Take care.